Hi friends, this is Amber and today I'm having an interview with Natasha and she is becoming an engineer. Hi Natasha. Hi Amber. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. Okay, I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Natasha. I'm Russian and this month I'm going to be 30. Uh, for the past six years um, I was teaching English and now I study automation engineering in Denmark. Wow, that's a big leap. <laughs> Why did you choose engineering or automation? Even like uh, two years ago, a you know, year and a half, I didn't think that I will be an engineer or will be studying engineering. At that time, I was living in China for about a couple of years and I've been teaching English, but I realized that it's probably not the country where I want to spend the rest of my life. Uh, there was a language barrier, there was a different cultural background, there was an um, extreme ecological situation, a lot of pollution. Um, and I was still thinking, what can I do? That I didn't want to go back to Russia just because I really like traveling and I enjoy living abroad. And also, I wanted to be able to go any country I want. And I thought, well, maybe I need to have a job because they say on almost like every country they need engineers, they need a medical personnel and they need IT mm -hmm. uh, people. And I was like, maybe I can, you know, do another job. So uh, I thought maybe not doctors because uh, you have to study a lot and not good with blood and injection. And then by that time I thought IT is too difficult. Now I think I actually can do it, but yeah, I already chose automation. And then there were engineers and um, I thought, okay, maybe I can look into that. And then there was a long process of me doing a research about engineering, what kind of fields are there, what kind of job do you do. So uh, I learned there is like mechanical, there is chemical, biomedical mm -hmm. and electrical. And after reading and Googling, I decided maybe I'm interested more in electrical engineering. And then I thought, okay, in electrical, they also have these fields like electronics, power, telecommunication, and controls. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I read that you can control industrial robots, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> so I was very excited um, and I just wanted to try if it's something I can do. So uh, I started doing PLC programming courses um, and after a while I thought I need to get a proper education and then try to find a job. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that in the beginning I was thinking, but can I do um, engineering? Because I really had this stereotype that you have to look a certain way, you have to have mm -hmm. a background like pulling things together in your basement since childhood or something. Um, I also thought that, I don't know, I, I thought that you have to be like man alike speak like a guy, you know, look like a guy, mm -hmm. have the same sense of humor or something. Uh, but while I was doing that research, I'm, I stumbled over a YouTube channel by combustion engineer, a girl who was doing masters in uh, ATH mm -hmm. University in Zurich. Mm -hmm. um, I think her channel is Gemini. Uh, and she was interviewing other um, women who were studying different um, uh, engineering in different fields. And all of them were saying that you don't have to be genius, you can be yourself, and that there is not that much math involved. Mm -hmm. So after that, I actually decided, yeah, I think I can do it. That's awesome. Tell us what your friends and family thought of you going into this profession. All of them were very supportive because it wasn't my first crazy decision mm -hmm. in my life. <laughs> it was China, moving to China. It was uh, like going volunteering in Korea for a few months. Uh, and by that, like they get used to me doing different things. Um, but um, now when I talk to them, they actually, because I don't remember actually how it all started, but my friends remember and they say they were really surprised and shocked 
and they thought it would pass like a flu. <laughs> but then when I was studying, doing all this project and learning not only like programming, but I was also learning AutoCAD and doing all this 3D water treatment stations, then they really thought that, yeah, she's being serious. So thus far, as you're going through your schooling, what is the most positive experience you've had? I, I think it also depends on the country where you study and the system here. Um, but in Denmark, they have um, a very practical based approach to the education. And for the first time, my school offered a free um, month of practicum before the studies. So, um, because uh, I didn't do any manual work in my life. And so I thought it's something that I could do just to get ready and just get more confident and also get used to the schedule of the school and um, get to know the teachers. And since the first day we started building demo units, we were installing sinks, uh, toilets, uh, uh, doing electrical design for this gate, um, uh, gate doors, um, and uh, I now like after that when I was using a power drill, when I was uh, using a hammer and work with my hands, I felt like more confident. Yeah. Even like it wasn't really automation, but somehow I understood that I can learn and I can do it. So, and um, sometimes during that course, when we needed to install something, we were divided into teams and some teams were moving really fast. And I'm the one who like always compare myself to other people and I was mm -hmm. like, wow, how do they know how to do it? But actually after I asked them, they told me they have previous uh, experience um, because they can choose electrical uh, classes uh, in a high school mm. or they have some electrical background. So that's why they're moving fast. And I realized that if like I'm having the same background with other students, I can easily keep up with the classes. And that was very empowering. It is empowering. I'm going to take up welding. I just feel like having that, I don't know, big flame in your hand is super empowering <laughs> and then you can make things and manipulate so I'm really excited about that. Have you had any negative experiences so far in your schooling? Well I only can mention that well uh, there are only like probably three girls in, in the automation class international and Danish together and uh, I get some what you can say unwanted attention uh -huh. um, I got received a common compliment, inappropriate compliment recent. Sometimes I'm conscious about what I'm wearing. I don't know, but yeah, um, I I hope that the person will never say it again. If not, I probably will need to take further steps to prevent this from happening mm -hmm. because I believe uh, it's not something that uh, women should do at school or anywhere for that matter. Anywhere, yeah, yeah. I agree. Do you think your success as an engineering student has influenced other women to get into the same field? Not yet. Because <laughs> I'm in the beginning of the journey, mm -hmm. but I think it is important to have more women um, in STEM, in engineering. Um, so the girls who growing up uh, can have uh, a role models. Mm -hmm because I don't have any women in my family who is doing any technical or engineering jobs. That's why when I was young, I didn't, I didn't even consider doing anything like this. Even if I was quite good at math and I have like this math, a lot of math classes in high school, uh, physics and chemistry, but I never considered to be an engineer. Neither did I. <laughs> Where can they follow your progress as you're going through school and becoming an engineer? Um, well, I have my Instagram account, so everybody welcome to go and uh, have a look at it. I usually post um, pictures uh, from the lab or from the project I'm doing. Um, I was, and also talk about school and what kind of system they have here in Denmark because I think uh, some people might be interested in who lives in Europe at least. <laughs>
How often do you get compared to a man? I don't think I was compared to a man、um, in school. I think they, they being,、uh, I wasn't treated differently even in the slightest. And even when we were doing this practicum, and they offered me to use a power drill, and I was how to hold a power drill. <laughs> so, but nobody would make any like sort of like jokes or comparisons. So、uh, it was so good, good so far. But of course, sometimes, like in conversation, um, I remember when I was in Russia, I was talking about some technical things with the guy and. Suddenly, when we have different opinions, I've been told that, oh, it's just the girl's stuff.、Mm -hmm. And I just told you why I think it's like business now. They brush it off just because I'm a girl. Yeah. But I also think it depends from country to country. I feel like、uh, in Denmark, I don't get as much of this,、mm -hmm. while in Russia, it happens a lot. Does anyone ever make you feel like you're incapable of moving forward, especially with your schooling or becoming an engineer? I don't think so. Even I think because now I really I feel like I understand what I'm capable of, and I don't need any like third opinion about it. And I try to surround myself with with people like minded people.、Mm -hmm. So I usually have a lot of support. And、uh, but if somebody will say. Anything like this, I don't think it will matter for me personally. Yeah, because I I know that I understand now that everything can be learned, and if you, some people can be talented and one thing,、mm -hmm. but it means that you need to put just more work and more effort in into that, and it will be just fine.、Mm, I agree. I know that、uh, a lot of、uh, women or girls they don't want to do engineering because they think they they're not very good at math and、uh, physics and anything like this. But now when I study、uh, in the college,、um, I can see that everybody in the class, like whether it's a woman or a man, we all struggle. Uh, with, we all struggle with new information. We all have to learn. There are no geniuses between, among us, but they like we. After all, we will become an engineer, even if we struggle for now. So,、mm. if you're not afraid to work for your dreams, you definitely should go and try engineering. Tasha, what do you hope to do after you get your degree? I really want to go and work in the field. After I finish my education,、uh, my program is only two years. So,、um, and after working some time、uh, in the industry, I might can consider to go back and、uh, do a top up program to get、mm -hmm. a proper engineering degree. But let's see what happens. I'm really I'm being so happy. Previously, I had to do my full time job and just do my. The things that I'm really interested about, like like a side project, like and you, and you don't have some sometimes times, and but now it's like I live my I don't know dream life, <laughs> and and I really also like that sometimes when because it's very practical based education,、mm -hmm. so we have maybe four、uh, courses. It's like PLC programming. It's electrical technology, it's math and project management.、Mm -hmm. So we don't have much unnecessary theoretical subjects that I had when I was doing my、uh, bachelor degree. So I can really focus on all like on PC programming, on something that I will use、uh, during like at, at work.、Mm -hmm. So like, and a lot of people were telling me that. If you will go to the college, you will forget how to program because it will be too theoretical.、Mm. And we were coding since the first week. You told them. <laughs> <laughs> This has been really good. It is wonderful to see it、um, in a different perspective, especially for you in a different country and going to school. Thank you, Natasha, and thank you for joining us today. And I'll see you later. See you, friends. 
Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.